The first game in the semi-finals for the Halloween event 1v1 tournament for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King between Mustafa against Fairy is all about to begin. Elves against Goblins is gonna be the matchup on the map Jungles of Far Harad, the best of three. It's a Goblin map after all, it's a really big map, we know that. We have seen Jungles of Far Harad so many times on this channel, in the World Championship, in almost every single event we were hosting before. But Elves, they seem to be nice also against the Goblins, we shall see. On the right side, we have the red Elven player Mustafa against the pink Goblin player Fairy from Belgium. Two Tanners from Fairy. We will have two Malone trees from Mustafa. Powerpoint wise, I'm pretty certain that uh, Elven player is gonna pick the Rallying Call and Fairy is gonna potentially pick the War Chant as well. The reason why this map is gonna favor the Goblin faction is simple. It's a really big map, you can hide a lot of tunnels really close to the side of the Elven player and that's gonna force the Elven player to play very defensively and has to try to not make any mistakes because the second he's actually out of position the Goblin player can punish him big time with a great push of the Goblins. Two Malone trees, Barracks into the third Malone tree. That's the build order from Mustafa's Elven faction. On the other side, we have two tunnels into the spider pit from Fairy into the third tunnel. Spiderlings, I think, are a great choice in this map because they are quite mobile. It's a big map, right? So you can attack maybe from multiple sides, left and right. They can get stealth around the trees, just like the Elven units. They are good for harassment, they can deal tons of damage to the enemy resource buildings. In this case, we are talking about the uh, Malone trees. And yeah, I mean, you can pressure with them, you can go for harassment, you can actually fight the Delorean warriors almost in a 1v1 situation. And besides, against, you know, in long terms, they're gonna fall off. Because Spiderlings, they are for me units that are reliable early on. But once the Elven player has enough archers on the field, Remember, Spiderlings are very vulnerable against Archers. We will have double barracks now. Uh, archers start here from Mustafa into the Pikeman. And the Spiderlings are going for a creep and I like to see that. Why? Because this way they're gonna hit level 2. Level 2 is gonna unlock the self-regeneration, they're gonna deal more damage. And as long as you can save one unit from the battalion, they're gonna automatically be respawning over time. Okay, Rallying Call has been chosen from uh, Mustafa. And Fairy didn't pick anything just yet as he's building up his first Goblin Cave. Beautiful. The Pikeman, Archers, he's gonna go for a defensive creep at the bottom left side. And Double Barracks is gonna give him the chance to make multiple Archers, but not sacrificing them and making Pikeman at the same time. Just to have some protection for those Archers to keep them alive. The creep will be secured by the Elven player. The Spiderlings are gonna run right into the Pikeman, but as they can't trampled the down the enemy units, running over them is not gonna kill them either. He's gonna try to steal the money. Fairy? Can he do it though? Can he do it? Yes, one part of the treasure is gonna be secured by the goblin player Fairy and he should also be able to get away. He's level 2 after all. That's really nice. I like it. Fairy is creeping even the second uh, work layer with the second spiderling battalion. That's also gonna hit level 2 now. And Mustafa uh, was losing one part of the treasure. He's moving now to the second work layer at the right side. And I think capturing those signal fires in this matchup for the Elven faction is gonna be very important. Because to you as Elven player should try to increase your vision control as much as possible to be able to see those tunnels, to be able to increase your reaction time. At the same time, Mustafa is being able to creep the troll layer at the bottom left side. Troll layer is much more rewarding than a work layer. It's harder to creep, obviously. It's gonna give you more treasure. The archers, they should be able to deal with those goblin warriors, no big deal. And we have the first fight between goblins, spiderlings against pikemen and archers, or against pikemen only. And also, Mustafa was using the rallying coal as well as Fairy was using his war chant on this battle. But Fairy will be able to win that fight and will be able to secure himself the third work layer on the map jungles of Far Harad. That means we have only one more creep left and that's the troll layer at the top right side. That's all we got. Nothing else is left. And now it's gonna be all about fighting. Three power points collected, 500 command points available for the Elven player. Three power points collected, 450 command points available for the Goblin player. 
We have now three goblin caves in total and one spider pits level one. On the other side, we have still the double barracks, but later on we might see the transition into the barracks level two, which costs, by the way, 1000 resources in order to get those milk woods on the field, aka the strongest archers in the game. Quega, my friends, welcome. Long time no see. How are you doing today? Okay, so we have some harassment attempts from the Goblin player. Remember, Warchan, but also Rallying Call is still on cooldown. The builder from Mustafa has to be careful, but it looks like he will be safe. And Mustafa is trying to build himself something like an outpost around this area. Spiderlings, three of them. Don't underestimate them. You should Now you will be able to see the damage on this Malon tree level 1. If they surround them, if they surround the, the Malon tree, they're gonna be able to burst it down really, really fast. Look at the damage. And, you know, obviously Fairy is trying to avoid fighting the pikemen and archers. He's just trying to deal economical damage to his opponent. The archers are off position. They need to be careful. There are just too many spiderlings to deal with. But again, like mentioned before, they are very vulnerable against archers. Look at the damage they are receiving. But it, it will, he will be able to save the battalion. Oh, he's running now the, in the wrong direction. He's going to lose some more spiderlings. Luckily, one of them is level 2. So he would have the self-regeneration. Look at uh, the tower is coming up. There is another barracks coming up from Mustafa. That's going to be hard to commit on. But half the those swordsmen, we have seen them being able to burst down those towers within seconds. And yeah, I keep repeating myself, but the tower nerf is going to affect the elven faction a lot. Because the fact that towers now has only have only 1500 health is going to make them much easier to take down. So especially strong units like Half Troll Swordsman, who are also very tanky, can destroy those towers within seconds. A rallying Call is going to be available at pretty much the same time like Warchant. Six power points collected, which is going to be invested into the cave pads. And we have seven power points collected and I'm assuming the Alvin player Mustafa is trying to collect enough power points for the mist. We have a wave of goblin warriors coming, but it looks like Mustafa will be ready to defend himself. He's going to use even the rallying Call defensively for some reason. And Fairy will have now the buff advantage. He can also choose to, you know, to just disengage in the situation. He doesn't need to take the fight. But now it's too late. He's committing fully on this Malone 3 level 1. He might be able to take it down, but he will lose all the Goblin Warriors right after. I think it's worth it, because not only he was able to take down the Malone 3. Yes, he lost a couple of Goblin Warriors, but he didn't use the War Chant. He was able to destroy the Malone 3, and he was forcing his opponent to use the Rallying Call as well. It's a really early end mood. It looks like Mustafa is gonna go for an early siege. Remember, he has a barracks in the front. He's gonna build another Malone tree in the protection of this tower. I mean, this area is nicely protected by Mustafa. But is it enough though? That's the question. After all, Swordsmen are dying to the tower with the archers inside. They are not buffed from the Warchan just yet. I would like to see also the Mirror of Galadriel in this situation, just to have some sustain for the archers. Look at the archers, they are quite badly damaged. He's gonna build yet another Malone tree. Look at the Malone trees he's building up here. He has four Malone trees in a really small area. Just to keep his command points as high as possible. On the other side, Goblin player was able to expand quite nicely and also building up now some lumber mills to increase his resource income. Yes, in total, Three goblin caves, one fissure level 1 and one spider pits level 2 actually. For the goblin spider riders, one of the tunnels is being taken down. But obviously because of the uh, goblins he has on the field, he's being able to win the map control fights while Mustafa is focusing almost exclusively on this pathway. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Like... I don't know if the early end mood can work out really nicely for Mustafa. Because I feel like right now he has not enough protection for the ends. And ends, they are really expensive units. They cost 700 each. So losing them is going to hurt you. Because getting them on the field is going to cost you a lot of money and also time. Building up the end mood, getting some ends on the field. 
And if this doesn't work, you will lose you will lose eventually a lot of resources. And if I take a look into the minimap, I can see goblins all around the place. And the game is freezing from time to time. Alright, so... Uh, Fairy is trying to keep up the pressure. And Mustafa um, is kind of in a, in, a, in a strange situation. I don't know if what's going to happen. I can't even tell you guys. But I feel like committing now with one end without any protection might be a mistake. He has like literally zero archers around to keep the end alive. That leaves the end kind of wide open for a potential attack. And ends are very vulnerable against pikemen, against something like half Swordman. swordsman, they can also kill him quite fast. But he's gonna go for the siege on the spider pits level 2. Dealing tons of damage, obviously it's a siege weapon from the Alvin faction. On the other side, uh, Fiery is trying to deal as much damage as possible in return. But for now he's gonna be forced to retreat. Luckily for Fiery, he was not using any of his power points for this attack. Everything is gonna be available for the defense. The spider pit level 2 got taken down, but he was already able to get two spider riders on the field. The rebel got destroyed as well. Is this gonna be enough protection? That is gonna be the main question. But remember, Elven player has rallying call available and also the mist available. The tunnel level 2 is gonna be taken down next. And I think what the goblin player might be forced to do is a giant sentry expansion. As we are getting to see more ants joining the battlefield. It looks like Fairy is just not ready yet. But he's gonna commit to that fight regardless. Warchan has been used and Cave Pets is available as well. He has 10 power points collected after that. He might go for something like Wildman or as Wildman is gonna be chosen. The mist is being used. Wildman, he's fully committing to that fight. The ants. He's going, I don't know, he's getting, he's getting bursted down very, very fast from this half troll swordsman, half troll pikeman actually. Fiesta is happening. I can't even see a lot of stuff here because of the mist. Half troll swordsman were able to get into the backline. It looks like the ants, or the ant in this case, and fear is being able to trample down multiple units. And those half troll pikemen they are trying to reach the ants. And look at the damage they are able to deal once they are done chasing. This fight will be big time won by the Goblin player because of the help of the White Man of Sunland, of the right combination of the units. He was able to dominate that fight. Everything is falling apart for the Elven player. He was losing two ends. Yeah, the ends were able to destroy the Spider Pits level 2 and the Tunnel level 2, but is this worth it though? That's the question. But the game is not over yet. This battle was able to buy some time for the Elven player. He was able to push him back a little bit. The tunnel here will be taken down next. We have right now 710 command points available for elves. 14 power points collected after the mist. On the other side, we have 750 command points available for fairy. Without any, he's gonna go for the for the fire drakes. By the way, guys, he was going for the upgrade on the fortress, the dragon nest. So he might go for the for the for the fire drake. I would love to see that. 750 command points available now, Wildman and 6 power points collected afterwards. And obviously Elven player will be faster with the 15 power points and can go for the Eagles for example. And I feel like Eagles are not getting counters here at all. He's definitely going for the Dragon. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. Look at the Dragon Nest. You're gonna see the Fire Drake now. Once he has the money collected for him. He has no money just yet. Fire Drake can be devastating. We have seen this so many times. The giant Sentry expansion is doing work. He's gonna go for another one. You need to make sure in this situation to always use the aggressive stance. Spider Riders are clamping and going for a trample. But there are just too many units. And they will be forced to retreat. Goblin player is trying to get the money he needs. He needs a little bit more. He needs 1500 for this Fire Drake. But the Eagles are coming in just in time. There is no counter to that. There is absolutely no counter to those Eagles besides Spider Riders with the, with the bows and the Fortress. He's trying to get his Fire Drake on the field, but can he do it? During all this time, Fairy is going for, for a counter attack, but we are already able to see some of these Mirkwoods joining the battlefield. The siege has begun. 
Yes, one ant, two eagles, is this gonna be enough to take down the fortress? One eagle is gonna be down. I think what he needs to do is kill this ant as soon as possible. He's already very low. He's hoping that he has the time he needs to get this uh, fire drake on the field. Even Lorien warriors are committing because Mustafa can see what we are able to see. He sees the dragon nest. He knows the goblin player is trying to get the big fire drake on the field. The siege didn't stop yet. The ant is actually not attacking for some reason the fortress. He's trying to attack the buildings around that instead. Rallying code is being used. The game is freezing from time to time. I hope you're not gonna have a DC on anyone. The rebel is gone. Fire Drake should have now the time he needs to join the battlefield, but can he do something? Because there is just too much leadership. He will need the Keith Pets for sure. Nice positioning from Mustafa also, using the trees, the Elvin passive, to make the units stealthed. Okay, he's gonna commit and try to take down the ant. By the way, the Fire Drake is a great counter to the ants as well. Okay. Mist is being used, cave pads is being used, but the early cave pads might not work out very nicely. Once, and they are gone now already, you see? But the fire drake is joining the battlefields now. Look at this. Breath fire, boys. But he's dying so fast. Oh, he's already gone, and it was all the investment from fairy gone. All the commitment. And no fire drake means... I mean, he has enough money, look his money. Like, he can revive his fire drake, no big deal. But the fortress is already so low. He's gonna go for more ants. Luckily, he was able to kill the ant. I think that was the main, you know, you know, main reason why he was committing to that fight. He was even going for the spider allies. But that is just too much. Look at this, Mirk boots in the backside, Mirk boots in the front, arches all around the place. Pikes in the front side. To tank the damage. And we have another end just joining the battlefield. He's never going for the tree beard. During all this time, we have small fights in the map control. Lorian Warriors, Pikeman. I like the way Mustafa is playing that. He's not tunnel vision focusing on one side. He's actually using multiple sides, multiple units, trying to punish his opponent while being able to siege him. Because he has the advantage now. He has the upper hand now. We have giants against or giant against end. It looks like the ant will be able to win. This giant is shooting much slower, obviously, than a normal giant you are able to recruit from the fissure level 3. The giants from the fissure level 3, this ones, they are shooting way faster. Way, way, way faster. Can the fire drake make it out? And if yes, can he do something? I think there is just too much. Too many medic woods, too many Lorian archers. I think he can't commit to that fight. That's not gonna be possible. I think the fire drake is gonna be barely able to join the battlefield, but the fortress is gonna be destroyed regardless. The tunnel has been taken down. I mean, it's not like the goblin plays, you know, poor or something. He has enough money. He has lumber mills, he has tunnels level 3. Okay. Level, look how much level he's getting from killing an ant. He's level 3 already. He's trying to kill the ant. He's dealing so much damage to this ant. Holy mo- oh, he's one-shotting him. That's what, I, that's what I meant. Like, you will be surprised about the damage he's dealing to the ants. He's one-shotting the ants. That's how strong he is. But he's like a glass cannon unit. He's all about ditching damage, not being able to tank damage. And just, you know, when you calculate the amount of resources for the ants, so he was able to take down two ants. In total, they cost 1,400. And the Drake cost 1,500 now. So it's not like terrible choice, terrible trait. And obviously the fact that he has to keep the fortress alive means a lot as well. Like there was a full commitment from the goblin player once again with the white man of Dunland summon. But we are getting more and more ends from the ends mood anyway. And now it's gonna be hard because the fortress is very very low. He has to build these expansions really fast. He has to try to stall and buy some time. And Fairy is fighting until the end, but the siege is very annoying to deal with. The fortress is like four hits away from getting destroyed from this end. And he's gonna get more of them. He might go for the tribute as well, I don't know why he's not going for it. 
He's gonna destroy the fortress. Everything is getting demolished. And the game number one will be won by Mustafa. In the best of three series in the semi-finals of the Halloween event tournament. And we're gonna jump right into the game number two, boys. Alright, boys. The game number two is all about to begin this time. On the map Sakura Forest 2, the matchup is the same elves against goblins. Mustafa is 1-0 ahead. He's one win away from entering the finals of the Halloween 1v1 tournament for the year 2020. The Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle-earth 2, the Rise of the Witch King, the longest name ever for a video game. Alright, at the bottom right side we have the red elven player Mustafa using a different nickname and his opponent at the top left side is the pink goblin player Fairy, who was losing the previous game. Rallying Cold start and War Chan start potentially also from the goblin player Fairy. So what happened in the first game was kind of interesting because Fairy was actually creeping all the possible work layers first. So not actually going for, an, for a big attack. Also not trying to build any tunnels close to the side of his opponent. And then Mustafa's choice or decision in this case, building an end mode that early, was pressuring Fairy so much. I think Fairy was ahead until this point. He was winning those skirmishes, he was able to take down some Malone trees, but the early siege surprised Fairy big time. Two Malone trees into the barracks, into the third Malone tree from Mustafa. Two tunnels into the first Goblin Cave. This time we're gonna have Goblin Cave start from Fairy, unlike in the previous game in which he was starting with the uh, with the spider links from the spider pit. Jungles of Far Shanks, Fort of Shanks, true, true, true. Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle Earth. The Rise of the Witch King patch 2.0 to version 8.4. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Longest name ever, dudes. Longest name ever. Okay. Uh, double barracks once again, like in the previous game. Why? Because you should never change a running system. It worked out already one time. Just, you know, why would you change it? Early double barracks from Mustafa once again. This time on the map Sakura Forest 2. Instead of the jungles of Far Shanks map. Which is a rename of the jungles of Far Haraz, by the way. Okay, two goblin caves. Rallying call. And nope, nothing chosen just yet from Fairy. He's gonna go for offensive creep. Nope, that's not gonna be the case. Um, and we have again the same start. So, nah, actually not. This time he's starting with the Lorian Warriors instead of Pikemen. So, Archers start first. He was able to see the Goblin Warriors now. He, should, he has enough time to deal with them. No big deal. Oh, I don't know about that, fairy. Oh, he didn't see them, I guess. He's also not happy about what happened. Oh, that was kind of <clears throat> waste of war chance. Now, Mustafa has a big advantage. I think fairy now has to try to creep. I mean, I think whenever you see archers that early into the game, you should never try to attack him with one or two goblin warriors, because that's not gonna work, especially now that he was kinda wasting his war chant from the spellbook. I think the best thing to do now is just try to avoid fighting, try to stall, and try to keep your opponent busy. I mean, it's easier said than done, I know that. But now Mustafa can actually go for a big counter-attack. Luckily for Fairy is the fact that he has only one Lorian warrior. That means the damage he will be able to deal to the structures is gonna be kinda limited. But it's gonna be a nightmare regardless, because now you can just camp here in front of the goblin caves. And that means every time a goblin warrior is entering the battlefield, he's gonna automatically lose them, because the archers with this buff and aggressive stance are gonna pretty much one-shot those goblins the second they are coming. The tunnel will be focused on... It's a, one of the most, if not the most important tunnel, by the way. The tunnel in front of the goblin caves. Uh, one of the first tunnels he was building up. He's committing to that fight. Nice one here. I like the micro from Mustafa. He's kind of trying to actually get to the backline. Doesn't want to give up the Lorian Arches for free. Waiting for the reinforcements. Waiting for the re-engage. And I like the micro here from Mustafa big time. He was able to win that fight. Look how many Goblin Warriors he was actually able to kill. The Fairy is now so behind. 400 command points collected. Perry is not happy, he's saying, hmm, not good in the chat, as you can see at the top right side. And that's the nightmare situation right there for every goblin player. 
Because what happened during this time, and I've said it multiple times, you don't want to fall behind with those factions. If you fall behind with dwarves or goblins, I feel like it's really bad. It's really hard to come back from. Especially against elves. Because he was now losing two of the most important tunnels. He has really low command points now, boys. 350 command points. He has almost no money left. He has four production buildings to only three tunnels in total. He has barely any units around. And on the other side, Mustafa was just getting a lot of money from those Malone trees. They are untouched all game long. All three of them are about to hit level 2. That's gonna give him more resources, a tankier building, and also 75 command points instead of 50. Okay, but now he might go for that nice trample. Nice micro here from Fairy there. I like it. Nice surrounding. There is no reason of you attacking with the archers, the spider riders, because you will almost deal no damage to them. Mustafa is creeping the work layer. He will be able to get the creep and the trash on the ground will be also secured by the player from Turkey. Beautiful, well done here from Mustafa. The spider riders, they are going for yet another trample, but they are now very, very low and they are only level 1. Now, they don't have any form of self-regeneration because they are level 1. And because Goblin Faction is an evil faction, it doesn't have a well to build. So you will eventually be kind of useless now with these units, but it's gonna kind of run into the Pikeman anyway. Powerpoint wise, 7 power points almost collected by Mustafa, that's quite a lot. 450 command points available against 400 command points and 3 power points only. So Fairy is behind in both command points but also power points in the game number 2. And he's already 1-0 behind against Mustafa. And whoever wins that will make it to the finals of the of the Halloween tournament. And we have one more semi-finals to go between um, Mr. Smuck against Ave Havi after this one. Before we are ready with the grand finals. Okay, Fairy is going for a big attack with the goblins at the bottom right side. Um, Warchan is available, 3 power points collected afterwards. Now he has to do something, he has to deal some economical damage, but look at that. Lord Findel is joining the battlefield with the splash damage, he will be... Oof, oh my goodness. But he's surrounded, he's surrounded, he might be in heal. Oh, but look, look how much damage they're able to deal to him. That's what clumping in Rise of the Witch King is. That's how important it is. Even through heal, he almost got one-shotted. Nice one here from Fairy, and now he will be punishing his opponent by taking down his level 2 Malone 3 as well. I think he won't be able to deal much more damage than that. I might be wrong, if he can take down this one as well, I think it's gonna be very nice. Bring all this time, you know, never change a running system, Mustafa is doing the same thing what he did in the previous game. He's building himself an outpost right in front of the base of the goblin player. He's gonna build a stage where, a, a, a tower, and then he's gonna go for the end mode again. He should not be able to take it down, I'm assuming, because the archers and the fortress are shooting them down. This Malone tree is gonna be saved for now. I mean, taking down the level 2 Malone tree is always nice. And also kind of, you know, forcing Mustafa to go for the heal to save Glorfindel. Who is now running around the map trying to finish off some tunnels. And Fairy is making sure to demolish those tunnels in time. To deny Glorfindel the experience he's looking for. Fairy must kill all the level 2 uh, Malone trees, is what Mr. Smock is saying in the chat. And yeah, I agree with that. I think at this point, Mustafa is just getting too much resources. And he can afford the end mode, and he can even afford potentially a level 2 barracks for the Mirkwood Arches very early. Goblin player is re really behind. And, you know, that's not becoming any better. Because now. He has a tower here, he will have arches inside of the tower. He will bring more reinforcements. And yeah, there is a tunnel. It looks like Fairy is going for another attack, but the problem is the Elven player will be able to see that coming. And look at this. He's gonna face against a big Elven forest. Dorian warriors, archers, everything what you need for a defense. And the goblin warriors, they can't achieve anything from this push. Power points are rising. Okay, he's gonna try to take down this tunnel, but it looks like Fairy doesn't want to give it up. But Rallying Call is being used now. Can he do it? 
He's gonna clump really nicely with the, with the pikeman. Look at the clumping. You see how many units are able to attack at the same time. And the tunnel is gonna be taken down anyway. Really nice and well done here from uh, Mustafa. Being able to destroy this tunnel when there are so many units trying to protect. And now he will be pushing his opponent back and Ferry is forced to demolish one of the most aggressive tunnels he was building. There is another one, but Mustafa will be able potentially to see that. The experience in Rise of the Witch King matters a lot. Playing those matchups, playing those maps, you can actually kind of predict where the tunnel might be. Because you know how, to fact how the faction works you are playing against. And then you have actually kind of sense where the tunnel might be at. You, then you know how to destroy, how to go for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have much more game knowledge the more you are playing, obviously. Alright, so Fairy is gonna fight until the end. We have seen this also in the previous game, but I think this game is gonna be much, much harder for Fairy than the previous game. He's one point kept. He has enough resources, but he can't use them. That's the big, biggest problem he has now. He has to build some more tunnels, but that's, again, this is easier said than done. During all this time, Mustafa is making sure to take almost every resource from the map. Creeping the work lane at the left side, creeping the work lane at the right side. Trying to snowball his lead to, to the victory of the game number 2 in order to reach the finals. There is no end mood coming up just yet. And there we go, that's what, it's, what I said before. Because he has such a big advantage now of the resources of the Malone Trees level 2, he has such a great resource income. Uh, Glorfindel, I think, got killed somewhere. I didn't even see that, but he's back on the field. Uh, level 2 upgrade is incoming for the barracks, so we're gonna see definitely some Mirkwoods sooner or later. It's a nice fight for Fairy. Uh, Elven player is kind of surrounded, but look at that. Like, you know, he's fully committed to that fight with the War Chant. And. I think Mustafa was kind of over, over, how come, you know, kind of over, us overestimating his own power here and kind of getting too far away from the tower range. But it looks like he will still be able to win that fight. Glorfindel is level 2 now. And I think in this game, yeah, Fairy is gonna be done. Yeah, he's gonna demolish everything. In this game, Fairy is kind of down. A lot of resources early on, like the waste of fortune early on, the mistakes he made. You can't afford those mistakes against experienced players like Mustafa. And that's gonna be the first semi-finals, boys. In the best of three, Mustafa was able to win 2-0 against Fairy, and is now reaching the grand finals. And we have another one, uh, Mr. Smock against uh, Avi Havi, before we're gonna jump right into the finals.